Hello guys, welcome to uh, ASPE, uh, Anatomy and Physiology, and Mechanics of Breathing. So this is your first um, topic on the respiratory system. Respiratory system is basically going to be looking at the lungs, okay, and how that affects our performance. Now, you kind of go through a few processes here. Before, you know, the first thing we have to be able to do is understand how we breathe, okay. So in order to understand how we breathe, we have to look at the mechanics behind breathing. Now, that will move on to us having a look at kind of uh, once we've breathed in, how we use the gases or the oxygen that we get in when we take that kind of big breath in uh, or inspiration as we'll to call it today and then how we use that to exchange gases and put oxygen into our working muscles so that'll be the way we're going over the next couple of weeks if we start off then um, focusing on the mechanics of breathing so it is what it, it is you know in order for us to breathe there are certain structures within our kind of um, around our lungs that allow us to breathe so this is what happens so if I just get you to kind of go on from here so you're basically going looking at this so what you're saying is this mechanics of breathing we have to look at it in two ways at rest and at exercise so when you sat down and resting okay sat down in a lesson there are certain things that happen so we basically focus on this so it works through a kind of a pattern and it's the direct opposite for expiration so inspiration is the is the concept of breathe, breathing air in expiration is the concept of breathing air out now if i just got you to imagine now you think right you breathe in Okay, if we could just get you all to breathe in now, put your hands on your kind of ribs. If we get out to here, now what happens is you basically have this concept of as you breathe in, you can feel your ribs move up and out. Now that is just a natural reaction. Now the thing that happens on, on the opposite side of that is there's two muscles involved uh, specifically with kind of breathing. Okay, and they're attached. One's below the lungs, uh, the ribs, sorry, and one's... Um, attached within the ribs which is the intercostal muscle so if you can imagine you start to kind of uh, breathe in when you inspire what happens is your diaphragm flattens it lowers and contracts your intercostal muscles so you've got something called the external intercostal muscles they contract as well so you've got two muscle things here so di is your start point diaphragm intercostal muscles they both contract now the diaphragm it's important to understand that that has the opposite direction it moves in the opposite direction so it flattens and moves down as the ribs move up and out so it's quite an easy one to remember you know you've got your ribs to start with um, and then you can take it from there so then if I kind of said to you what happens as a result of that if I get you to breathe in again so just kind of uh, you know breathe yourself in as you breathe in you'll feel your ribs move up and out now due to that the kind of space in your kind of rib cage is called the, the, the thoracic cavity now if you can imagine you're moving your ribs up and out that makes a creates a bigger area a bigger volume and that's called the thoracic cavity volume so that thoracic cavity volume increases okay and then as a result of that because there is more space in your thoracic cavity e.g the thoracic cavity volume increases there is less thoracic cavity air pressure so there's less pressure because there's more space okay so that means that more air can rush into the lungs because we have a bigger volume area and less pressure in there so it allows us to just breathe in as we do so basically what we say in there it basically works in the following ways if you're going to think about this in kind of a, a technical term muscles have to contract in order to move our ribs up okay this leads to so the first two things are based around muscles this leads to our ribs moving up and out this leads to an increase in thoracic cavity volume and that directly leads to a decrease in thoracic cavity pressure which allows us to uh, increase or have air in rush into our lungs now on the opposite side so if you go and breathe out okay what happens is the diaphragm relaxes and moves back up okay the intercostal muscles the external intercostal muscles relax the ribs do the opposite move down and in the thoracic cavity volume now because we're squeezing that kind of we're going inwards and down and in it closes the volume so there's a decrease in thoracic cavity volume and thoracic cavity pressure increases because there's less space now so the air is under more pressure and this allows air to rush out of the lungs now the only confusing bit i suppose from this is you basically i'm sure you understand in order to move a bone a muscle has to pull on it okay it's the same with anything so in order for our kind of um radius ulna and humerus to move our bicep muscle has to pull on it on those bones in order to make it work exactly the same here we have two sets of muscles that work when we're at rest in order to move our ribs up or down so what we have is the kind of obviously this is the active phase because we kind of we need these muscles working actively in order to pull our ribs up and out when it comes on the other one on the way down it works the opposite they just relax 
and go back to their original position. Now, the, like I said, the confusing thing might be, and I think the way, best way I always say, the intercostal muscles will always be used. How you work it out is um, kind of, you know, for inspiration, it's the external intercostal muscles at rest, and then we'll talk about how the internal intercostal muscles come into play during exercise. So, hope you can make notes on that. You need to have the mechanics of breathing at rest as your subhead in. Then you need to do an inspiration and expiration and make sure you have good called out questions for this. We cannot afford slip ups in lessons at the moment. Okay, so now, how does it change during exercise? So, during exercise, as you can imagine, there is more demand for oxygen. Okay, you need more air in rushing into your lungs. You need to increase the depth of your breathing so how does that happen well during exercise i always like to think as soon as you see mechanics of breathing come up you know mechanics are talking about the structures so we know you're talking about muscles ribs okay they're the things that cause this volume and pressure to change so what we need to do now is when we have exercise it's virtually the same or pretty much every component is the same the only difference is we have to exaggerate exercise exaggerate what happens so basically now if we're saying during inspiration the diaphragm's still there but when it flattens and contracts, it does so with more force. Now, also the intercostal muscles, so the external intercostal muscles, they contract with more force. Now, the only difference is that due to the fact this is now a kind of active process during exercise and there is more demand for oxygen, there are some additional muscles that are used to help pull the ribs up more further, further out, up and out. So you've kind of got these additional muscles, which are, you've got the pectoralis minor, you've got a muscle, which I've put down here, you've got something called the scalenes, and also the sternocleidomastoid. I haven't put that in there because I just thought it would frighten you and I'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay, so this pectoralis minor, if you breathe then again, imagine when you exercise, you can feel your lower chest muscles kind of helping force those kind of ribs up and out. Okay, so this makes them, uh, the ribs move further up and out. The thoracic cavity volume increases further. The thoracic cavity pressure decreases further. And this leads to more air rushing into the lungs due to a deep uh, increased depth of breathing, if you just add that there. So same things, only thing we have now, due to exercise, we exaggerate and we also uh, add on additional muscles. Now, this is the bit that kind of could be a little bit different. Now, it, expiration during rest is like a, a, is a recoil. It's just a reaction. So if you breathe in, okay, your muscles contract and it's a relaxation, okay, of the exact opposite muscles. Now, what we need to do now is, I mean, you can put the diaphragm, relaxes and moves back up, but this is important now. What happens at this point? Suddenly, when you're exercising, you are actively forcing, and I'll put that active word there, forcing air out. You're not just going, you're actually, you're fully breathing out. Now, when you're doing that, okay, in order to do it, your diaphragm relaxes and move back up, yes, but what also happens is there is a swap. There is a swap in the intercostal muscles because what happens now is there's this, this kind of stimulation of muscles that work actively. It's not just a relaxation of the external intercostals. The internal intercostal muscles which are attached to the ribs actually contract and there are further, if you breathe out as far as you can, Okay, you will feel your rectus abdominals muscles, which are obviously your abs, and your oblique muscles, which are down the side of your body, they start to contract. You can feel them. If you blow, like, kind of breathe, sorry, breathe out as far as you can, at the end of that breath, you will feel your stomach and your side of your stomach, which are your obliques, contracting. Now, this then, again, has exactly the same effect. If you're breathing out, that means the thoracic uh, cavity volume decreases further, and then you have a uh, thoracic cavity air pressure increases further and this means that more air rushes out of the lungs and you have an increased rate of breathing so four things four focuses if we go back you've got your kind of mechanics of breathing at rest so we're talking about diaphragm internal in intercostal external intercostal muscles ribs um Thoracic cavity volume, thoracic cavity pressure, air, and exactly the same, just the opposite on there. The key thing is we're talking about on this bit is that we have um, exaggerated actions and additional muscles for inspiration, and we have additional muscles and actively contracting muscles rather than just relaxing muscles for uh, expiration. So same formula all the way down. Diaphragm, intercostal, ribs, thoracic cavity volume, thoracic cavity pressure, air in, air out, rate, depth of breathing. Goes through exactly the same thing. I will give you kind of an acronym tomorrow uh, to kind of help you with it, but this should be into your core notes now. Thank you.